Hey y'all, it's Mary Liz and welcome back to my channel. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, I've lost my voice and I'm kind of raspy and gravelly today. Um, but I wanted to do a vlog about a specific topic today and I am so very excited about it and it's an important topic for pregnant women and new moms and to help me talk about all this stuff uh, is my friend Cherie. She's going to be discussing the topic of health and wellness during pregnancy and postpartum. So uh, Cherie is our wellness and outreach director at Warren's Family Life Center. And by Warren, I mean Warren Baptist Church. So Cherie, thank Second you for minute. being here. <laughs> yeah, thank you for inviting me. Um, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, well, my name is Cherie, last name Hurt. Um, I have been the wellness and outreach director at Warren for a little over a year. I went to school for community health. So this is right up my alley, um, health education, wellness. Also been a group fitness instructor for going on my fourth year. Crazy. Mm -hmm. um, it's my first real job. And <laughs> let's see, I'm married. I've <clears throat> been married for every year. I We just bought a house um, in Martinez. I, my husband is super awesome, and so is my dog, and I love my cat. If I didn't say <laughs> that, she would know if I didn't tell the world. Um, cats I, always know. Cats always know. I love cats. Uh, so, just as a disclaimer, I've never been pregnant, nor do I have a child. I have fur babies. Um, but I feel like I could take this on because it definitely, being pregnant doesn't necessarily separate you out from the crowd. Mm -hmm. It just shakes things up a little bit. And so I feel like I could still help. I'm Wonderful. grateful I'm here. Yay. Hi. I'm excited that you're here. Um, and by the way, she did not say anything about her being an amazing floral arranger, oh, but we're, we're, we're going to talk about that later. Okay, don't worry, don't sorry. worry. Um, but uh, I kind of wanted to make this a Q&A style video, um, so I um, will be asking some questions and she can hopefully give us some tips about um, how to stay healthy that may be on the minds of some women who are pregnant or new moms. Um, so. Um, a little short story here. Um, when I was pregnant with Penelope, I kind of let myself go about mid-pregnancy and gained a little bit of weight. That was, okay, a lot of bit of weight. That okay. was very, very unwanted. And, um, you know, I just, I wanted to know for myself um, how I could get back on track. It was, it took me a while to kind of get back into the swing of things, but, you know, I, I really, you know, wanted to be healthy for Penelope and I wanted to be a good example for her and see that you know her her mommy was making the effort yeah. to get my life back on track um, so um, I'm gonna be asking questions also for my personal knowledge um, so I can learn for a Lord willing my next pregnancy meaning I am not pregnant at this very moment <clears throat> People might have thought that. I know. I, I know. It's very dangerous. You, that's very good. dangerous. You need to that. That's good. Yes. So before we get started, I do have a disclaimer. Cherie is not, and I repeat, not a medical professional. And she no. tells people this a lot. So I won't be asking questions um, that can only be answered by a doctor or your OB. Um, I'll have a couple in there that were recommended to me by my doctor, but that just applies to me, not you. <laughs> so um, my first set of questions will be for pregnant women, and then the last set of questions will be for um, women who have just had babies. So question number one, it was suggested to me by my doctor that I eat around 300 to 500 extra calories per day. What do you suggest would be some of the best foods to eat for those extra calories? Okay, so starting off, 300 to 500 calories is actually not as much as it sounds like in terms of quantity of food. Um, that is probably relatable, relatable to like one breakfast, one extra breakfast, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, and what is it doing? It's fueling your body for growth because your baby's growing and it needs it. And lots of other things are going on. Your metabolism speeds up. So that's what those calories are being used for. However, um, just kind of breaking it down, I thought to myself, okay, well, Myself personally, if the doctor told me, not if I was pregnant, but just in general, if I need extra calories, what would they be? I'm always going to think fruits, vegetables, and proteins because your body's going to utilize those in the right way. 
so, but specifically, I wanted to know exactly what pregnant women wanted, and so I found that here were just a few top ones. There's a lot, and a nutritionist would know way better than me, but these were good ones. Um, so number one, you need a lot of vitamin A that helps with bones and teeth, so a lot of that development that's going on, um, and your body's also losing a lot of it, so you need to replace it. So um, almond butter and carrots, mm. so good, so good. Um, not that I'm anti-legume, but almond butter just has it going on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit better than peanut butter, the fat's a little more breakdown, a little mm -hmm. less sugar. Um, just a good source that's protein, and then of course your carrots are vitamin A. Um, or if you're not a sweet fan or you're having salty cravings as opposed to sweet, hummus is another really good option. Mm -hmm. Just watch the sodium. Um, another thing is vitamin C. So, you know, people have a lot of thoughts about what vitamin C stands for. The biggest one is healing. Um, and what your body needs for is immune system building. So you want a healthy baby, mm -hmm. right? You don't want them to be getting sick a lot. So strawberries and citrus fruits, just like you would think of. Avoid juices because they're higher in sugar. Um, and you need to keep your blood sugar. I'm sure you've heard that. Keep your blood oh, yes. sugar in oh, check. Yes. 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 Um, so you're not at risk for some diabetic issues. But, And then last, because iron is so crucial for just blood and getting oxygen to the body, um, you can just eat a small salad. You can have, um, you can even just bring, tote along some Cheerios if you're okay with some processed foods. Uh, so lots of options there, but those are, in my opinion, my opinion, the top three <laughs> to kind of focus on. Okay. So. And obviously, each pregnant woman is different. So just know that you may need extra calories um, or you may not even need any extra calories at all. Um, so that is something that you want to talk to your doctor about. All right, question number two. All right, if my doctor gives me the go ahead, what kind of workout routines or circuit training would you suggest for a pregnant woman? Okay, let's repeat that first sentence. If what? If my doctor gives me the go ahead. Did you hear that? I hope you heard that. If the <laughs> doctor gives you the go-ahead, that means you've gone to the doctor, you've said, doctor, I want to work out, is that okay? And they've said, yes, go for it. Just want to make sure that's clear. Um, then it actually does not change much from when you are pregnant versus not pregnant. Okay. So I did a lot of research, I was like, I don't think so. Like, uh, yeah, it doesn't sound <laughs> right, health.com. But I did a lot of like scholarly research, um, and what I found is that they still recommend that's 150 minutes, however you want, um, just that's the cap. And so the best way to do that is um, by walking. That's the best. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's the best if you're pregnant, if you're not pregnant, just walk. Walk, walk. Um, and another thing, we, we'll kind of break down this in question, your next question, so we don't get too far into it, but you do want to put some circuit training in there, um, and that's just anything that involves very light weights. Your doctor may have given you the clearance to work out with whatever weights you normally do, or he might have said, you know, don't go over 20 pounds lifting. So that's definitely a specific thing, um, but I would definitely recommend that at least twice a week. Wonderful. My next question, question number three, what can I do for core strength during pregnancy? Well, first of all, goodbye abs. Just kidding. They're still there. <laughs> They're still there. They're just hiding under the baby. Um, with your core is from your shoulders down through your midsection and actually into almost quite your knees. Okay. So, fun fact, um, that's your core mm -hmm. area. It's more than just the belly. Um, and the best thing to do is, well first let me ask you this, did you have back pain? Um, towards the end. Yeah, so yes. it's almost 60% of women who are pregnant have lower back pain mm -hmm. and that's because there is a baby sitting there and your body's like, oh okay, not that I have ever, ever have been, but I, I get it, I get the science <laughs> of it. Um, and so your, your back is trying to compensate for that extra weight that's there and so um, that's where all the pressure hits. You want to keep your back strong okay. more so than just the think thinking Oh, I've got to work on my tummy, you know, because um, it's just going to keep on growing, okay? Um, and also, you don't want to go on the floor. That was one of the biggest things I saw recommended was yes. you, you don't want to lay on the ground because it causes blood flow issues. Mm -hmm. um, the blood will not flow to your extremities correctly. you will mess up kind of blood flow with the baby. And so just besides sleeping, no, no. Yes. Let's just forget about the rest. Yep. Um, and so don't think crunches. I want you to think crunches but differently. I want you to think crunches standing up just putting like hands behind your head and standing it's gonna feel weird but it's working if you have a silver sneakers class uh, somewhere near you or here at Warren then that's actually a great because that class they sit down and do abdominal exercises and that's exactly what a pregnant woman needs okay 
Uh, and another thing is wall sits are really good because really? you're using yeah. your hips and your pelvis. All right. Your feet cool. good I need to remember that for next time. I know. <laughs> But I'm that's sorry, very important. You need to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. very important to it do is. those. Ooh. Pregnant ladies, when you have your baby, you'll understand why Kegels are important. So, <laughs> all right, question number four. Is there any workout or activity that I should avoid or at least lessen the intensity level of? Yeah, football. Football. <laughs> I Go did on. find one person who was like debating whether or not you could do contact sports, but listen, don't do them. No, so no contact sports. Um, no extreme temperature workout. So mm. you don't want to be going out in Georgia heat, which is kind of cool enough, thank the Lord, yeah. um, and do a run. You don't want to take a hot yoga class, as cool and trendy as it sounds, and you don't want to do any hot Pilates or something like that. So um, and that's just because of how <clears throat> your blood flow works when your body gets that hot and how it can cause a lot of things, especially you can get dehydrated. So, and it's really crucial to stay hydrated. Um, and the other thing is we already talked about it, it's actually being on your back. So just go ahead and cut out your core class because more likely they're getting on the ground for that. Okay. You can still run too, <laughs> by the way. It's safe. It's, talk to your doctor first, but it, you can, your baby's not going to like fall out. Probably once you get to the really big <clears throat> stages, yeah, you're probably not going to, yeah, I don't think you're going to feel like running. Yeah. Question number five. Oh, this is like my favorite question. Oh, good. Of out of all the questions oh, that I've asked, this, <laughs> this is this is this is a good one. Okay, so some days, or every single day of a pregnant woman's life, you just want some form of junk food. You know, French fries, ice cream, or a family-sized bag of ruffles. You know, not picky, mm -hmm. but um, I do know um, a woman and a mom who. Her craving was gas station nachos. Um, <laughs> Sorry, mom, but well, you're listening. I mean, I'm sure, like, you know, at the time it sounded good. Yeah. But, you know, I know everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. That's very key. Um, but, you know, my excuse was I'm pregnant, it's okay. Um, and I basically told myself that lie every single day. So, what can I do to keep from telling myself this lie? Okay. And are there healthier, healthier alternatives to those not so good gas station nachos? Yeah. So number one, let's just say never gas station nachos. <laughs> um, Processed cheese, or yeah, it's probably not even cheese. Go ahead and real. cut out any of that. Sounds relatively <laughs> similar. Um, and I'm, I'm going to approach this from a controversial standpoint, but only because um, of my personal history. I'm not going to say that it's healthy to ignore every craving. Because, and a doctor might argue with me, but personally. Um, and I think that's a mental thing. Um, there's already a lot of emotions going through your body when you're pregnant. And I can just, I just know, like, I'm sure my husband has already thought about it. Like, when I get pregnant and I say, take me to somewhere, and he says, no, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I, I do that now. <laughs> I crave Guilty. junk food every day. Um, so the, the, the wisest thing to do is just write it on a sticky note. Tell your spouse, if I ask for this, just say no. You know, write it down. Just say no. Um, or write down, is it good for your baby on a sticky note? It, imagine seeing that mm -hmm. and thinking, no, it's not. You know, um, I may be pregnant, but I am with a child. You know, yes. like, it's different. Every now and then, you know, if you feel like you've been really consistent and you feel like you can have good self-control, treat yourself a mm -hmm. little bit, you know, like, so that in five years you have that story of, when I was pregnant with you, I made yeah. dad take me to get a cheeseburger, <laughs> you know? I think, and that's just kind of where I stand on it, is just be wise. Um, don't say no every single time, but do know when it's right and when it's wrong. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're getting into the postpartum questions. Really had to do my research for this one. <laughs> oh goodness! All right, so um, a few of these questions um, may not apply to you. Uh, I'll let you know which ones they are um, before you know going into them. But um, so just disregard if they do not apply to you. All right, so question number one: I know some women, and I've had some friends who have struggled to get back into their workout routine post-pregnancy. Uh, what would be the easiest way to ease back in to working out? So, finding a routine, no matter what has paused you, is hard. Uh, but my first, immediately when I read this question was sleep. 
you've got to find a good sleeping routine first. And that might be impossible. I know it's impossible with a kid, but um, once you find there, you need to know that you're getting enough sleep because if you're not getting enough sleep, there's no way you're healthy, like being healthy and working out. Um, you won't have enough energy. So my first thought is, do you have a sleep pattern? If you do, if you feel like you found in a, a way to get in enough sleep that's good for your body, um, then it's time to find a routine that works for you. My first thoughts and would always be if you're easing back into any exercise program is very light cardio, walking, um, Pilates, yoga, mm -hmm. if your body will let you, if you didn't have any complications or have any of that sort, so contraindications. Um, and then call a friend. I, a lot of you people are pregnant at the same time, and I know that I'll probably be pregnant with my friends, and you know, <laughs> um, if you have a friend who is in the same life stage as you, get them involved too, because just like if you weren't pregnant, you have a 50% more, more and more likely to stick to your workout program and lose twice as much weight. And you have the encouragement from yeah. your friends who know what's going on. Right, exactly. They and know what you're going through. Yeah, so, like. All right, question number two. So personally, I had, a c-section an emergency c-section so um, this may not apply to um, some of you ladies um, so personally I had a c-section an emergency c-section and got strict orders from my doctor not to hardly even go anywhere for at least two weeks so my incision healed a bit and then after the three week mark I could venture up and down the stairs a couple times and then walk around the house for a bit um, and then after the six week mark, I could go on short walks around my neighborhood, uh, meaning that all I could do for the first six weeks of Penelope's life was I could eat, drink, sleep, and feed her. So um, what are some of the best things to eat and drink postpartum that will fuel, fuel my body even though I can't work out yet? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, I'm not a doctor, but speaking from a health education standpoint, and also as a nursing school, fun fact, was a CNA, fun fact, uh, vitamin C and protein are gonna be your two best friends on here. A wound clinic would tell you the same thing because it is, at the end of the day, a wound. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do want it to heal. So protein helps restore the tissue in there. So, you know, think low fat, high protein items, four ounces of chicken, um, probably would avoid your red meats just because of cholesterol. Your body's still balancing out mm -hmm. and bouncing back from everything. Um, fish is super awesome at healing. Uh, probiotics, yogurt, those kind of things are really good. And then the vitamin C to help with your immune system, going ahead and fighting off infection. So, you know, whatever that looks like for you, grapefruit in the morning, orange slices in the evening for a lunch, for a snack or something. That's my best recommendation. And just lots of water yes. and green lots tea. And lots so of water. good for you. I love green tea. Avoid I love coffee. tea. Yeah, um, that I was told that also yeah. to avoid um, high intakes of caffeine. Mm -hmm. A little bit's okay, but um, just not a whole lot. <laughs> it's just the time um, when your body just needs to do its thing yeah. and, and heal itself rather than you know, interfere with that. Mm -hmm. really. Okay, so this question may not apply to you also. Um, I breastfed. You may not have breastfed or are not breastfeeding, um, that's okay. We don't judge, you're doing whatever is best for your baby. Um, but this is coming from me as a breastfeeding mom. So, my lactation specialist told me not to attempt anything that was high intensity um, because there's a possibility that it may hurt my supply. Um, so what are some low intensity workouts that I can do that are still going to be effective? Okay, so I don't know a, a ton about the science of why it interferes years with your lactation and all that stuff, but this is just going to go right back to the beginning. What would you do right after you had a baby? You would just do walking, very low impact things. Try those silver sneakers classes. Um, stay off a bike. You know, don't do mm -hmm. any spin classes. And then you need to you need to get specific with your doctor. You know, if I'm not sure what your doctor told you, but if you had inquired a little bit more, maybe said, well, what's your definition of low intensity versus high intensity? He might be able to give you a better breakdown. Um, but just keep it simple, as boring as it is. Just keep it simple. So question number four. I had my baby in the fall, so it started to get cooler out, and I didn't want to expose her to the colder temperatures yet. Um, so um, I didn't feel comfortable going to the gym yet also. Um, I mean, who really enjoys going to the gym right after they've had a baby? So what are some workouts that I can do at home to avoid going out into the harsh temperature. Okay. So first of all, 
I love to tell people this. No one is looking at you in the gym <laughs> um, because everyone thinks everyone else is looking at them in the gym. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> they just keep their heads low because they're like, so and so. So by the, before you know it, the whole gym, everyone's just like this. So down. confidence. Just stay. Okay. If you want to get back in the gym, get back in there. You know, just do it. Um, <laughs> you know, keep taking it easy, of course. And then my opinion would just be pull up YouTube fine type in I mean there are so many videos out there and you'll know watching them if they're safe or not um, type in you know postpartum workouts and stuff and they might have really simple things there are actually several fitness professionals um, who are certified in prenatal and postnatal fitness so okay. a lot of people have put a lot of time and effort into making videos and so research that uh, and then of course right back to what I've already said the whole walking you know maybe you have a treadmill in your house so you don't have to go outside it's cold um, or at Warren, we have a track. 16 laps is a mile, and it's $15 for a year. <laughs> um, but that's just my opinion. You'll find something that you enjoy doing, and mm -hmm. good thing YouTube has a bazillion videos on nice. there. That's very true. Blogalotti. So, oh, wait, sorry. Blogalotti. Blogalotti? Yeah. Okay. Blogalotti. She has a lot of really good, low intensity workouts. Okay. Good to know. It's very good to know. All right, and my last question. On days that I'm feeling too tired to go to the gym, which you will be, um, because you've just had a baby and you know your sleep pattern is all messed up and like Cherie said earlier, you're gonna wanna find a sleep pattern. Sometimes they may get interrupted, but as much sleep as you can get is, is really good. <laughs> but on days that I'm feeling too tired to go to the gym or even work out at home, or maybe I just don't have the time, during the day to do a full 30 minute workout. What is something that I can do that's quick and easy, but still somewhat effective that can give me a little bit of energy mm -hmm. to make it through the day? So I have two recommendations for this. The first one is Tabata. And that sounds weird because it's actually a Japanese term. Tabata. If you are cleared, if you are cleared for moderate to higher intensity workouts, this is a great one for you because it's a little bit of time but a lot of it will work. Um, it's four minutes and 20 seconds and how that breaks down is 20 seconds of hard work uh, followed by 10 seconds of complete rest. So you could jog in place for 20 seconds and then rest and then for 20 seconds you could um, do like curls or something and then rest um, and so what that comes down to is all eight rounds by the end of it you're like you are tired but you feel good because you worked up a sweat so um, try that do it two or three times Tabata um, structure says four times but that kind of actually comes out to closer to like 25 minutes so it might push it if you're on okay. a time crunch so just try one around and then the next day try two rounds and it'll actually increase your endurance capability when you get back into your regular workouts you'll feel better um, okay so it's a good stepping stone. is that something that I can find online yes absolutely Tabata, Tabata. look up beginner Tabata. Yeah. beginner yes. okay so those are the, all the questions that I had for you, Cherie. If you have any questions for Cherie, please comment in the box below or in the comment section below. Um, so thank you. Thank you for, for being here me. with us today. Um, I feel ready. Like, <laughs> you know, a few, a few years when it's, um, I'll be pregnant, I'll be like, I already know how to do this. I already know. <laughs> I did all my research. Um, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to post her websites down below. We talked about it earlier. She's an amazing floral arranger. Um, she has a website called Waiting on Wildflowers and you can see her portfolio in that website. She is also an amazing blogger. She talks about her life with her sweet hubby and um, she's amazing. She, she really is um, inspiring to me. So I'm also going to post that down below. It's called Vine and Victory. Um, and then I'm also going to put the Warren FLC website down below. If you're interested, um, if you're in the Augusta or CSRA area, if you're interested in taking some classes, you can find those on the website or if you're interested in joining a gym. Like Cherie said, $15 a month for walking for around for, for the walking track. That's a year. For, okay, so $15 a year for walking, for walking around the track. That's, that's really that's good. Pretty good. That's two trips to Chick-fil-A. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just saying. I know. Oh. So, um, but if you're looking to join a gym, also you can come here and, and, and sign up. So, um, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Y'all take care now. Bye.